move on to talk about another very, very uh, useful thing. It's called the stochastic gradient descent. Uh, this is uh, the most widely used uh, algorithm nowadays in machine learning. So the difference between the gradient descent and the stochastic gradient descent is, of course, that, that we're stochastic. Um, so what does it mean? Well, uh, the, the, the starting point of a st stochastic gradient descent algorithm is the realization that most of the machine learning problems, they are separable. By separable, I mean that uh, your loss function, you can write it as the summation of the individual losses. So you have a data point, you have an image of a, of a dock, and then you pass this image into a classifier. Then the classifier says that it is a dock, so you measure against your true label, and then if it is correct, you have a, you have, you have certain loss value, right? And then you plug in another image, there's a cat, and then you measure that again. So, uh, all these loss functions is, is captured by these individual losses. And then you sum them up, that will be your total loss, right? So this is called a separate because you can, you can break into individual terms separately. Now, there are, this actually holds for many, many choices of the common losses that we have uh, today. It can be square loss, where the, the loss is really the square term of individually. Uh, you can have the cross entropy loss. Uh, here you have, uh, we will come to this point later, okay? So the cross entropy loss says that you have the y, uh, your, your label times the log of this probability time, uh, plus one minus y times the log of one minus the probability. Uh, so that, that's another way of defining the loss. That's for the two class, uh, uh, uh classification problem. Uh, you can also do this, do this a uh, logistic loss. Okay. Another form. And you can see that this is also a summation of all the individual, uh, samples. So many, many, this loss functions can be written, uh, as a sum of the individual terms. So, so now what? Well, so, when you look at the gradient descent algorithm, you notice that the gradient descent algorithm is actually doing this. You have theta of t plus one equals to theta t minus this eta t times the gradient of your loss function. What is the loss function? Well, the loss function is actually just the gradient of the summation, right? So, so let me remind you, this, this loss function j of theta is the one over n, uh, n going from one to capital N of Jn of theta. So Jn is the nth, uh, loss term. Okay. So now when you take the gradient of this, uh, uh, uh j, uh, theta, then of course you're taking the gradient of this guy, and then the gradient is okay with the interchange with the, uh, summation and over, so one over n. Then you have one over n summation and then gradient of Jn. All right, so that will give you this term. This is your gradient. Now, to evaluate this gradient, what do you do? You evaluate the gradient of all the individual terms and you sum them up. Now, depending on how large your data set, uh, that will take a lot of sum. So what stochastic gradient descent says that instead of calculating this full gradient, you pick a random subset of the training sets. Okay, so you, in, 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 here you have uh, samples from one to n. Instead of using all the samples from one to n, you pick a random subset, maybe one to ten, maybe uh, five, ten, twenty, twenty-one, and then fifty sample. Rather than using everyone, you choose a small subset. So pictorially, what you mean is that here is uh, all the samples one and going from one to n. And then you just randomly pick a subset, you call it B. Okay? Now how random is random? Can be uniform, that can follow certain distribution, and then it can be different for every iteration, it's just random. So now you pick this set B, then you approximate this gradient, this full gradient, using this partial gradient. So partial gradient says that sum over all the indexes inside the set B, and then I will, I will normalize using the number of samples inside the set B. That's stochastic gradient descent. Everything follows, okay? So once you get this approximation, replace that, you get the uh, stochastic gradient descent algorithm. So why, why is this good? Well, it is good in terms of speed, right? Or, or think about the case where your n is a million, Originally, you need to calculate all these gradients a million times and sum them up and take the average. And now you can just take maybe 
20 samples or 100 samples, okay, that would be a quick approximation. Then you start to ask, would it ever converge, okay, would it ever converge to my solution? Uh, and, and magically, this, this stochastic green descent uh, algorithm shows that uh, it converges. Even in the extreme case where you only pick one sample at a time, it still converges. Okay. Of course, it will take a lot more iterations to converge to, to the original uh, solution as this one. Okay. So maybe here you only take 10 iterations. This one, you may take 100 iterations. Okay. Uh, so, but, 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 but the, uh, the idea is that this will still converge. Okay, so um, the algorithm of the stochastic gradient descent is it says what I'm just described. Uh, you have data sets uh, x n and y n. X is your image, y is your label, and then uh, you, you 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 initialize your 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 parameter, okay, or your variable. It can be random, it can be zero, and then going through this algorithm, you draw random subset from the set of from 1 to n, okay, so you draw a set B, and then you do this update, and then over the iterations, uh, you can show that it will converge. Um, okay, so you can go to the extreme case where B has only one element, and you can also show that this approximate gradient is unbiased, meaning that when you take the expectation of this quantity, you can show that this expectation will equal to this uh, gradient of the original uh, full gradient. Okay, so uh, the proof of, of this unbiasedness can be found in the appendix of the set of slides. It's actually fairly easy uh, when you make some assumptions about the uh, the distribution. Um, <coughs> so now, how do you interpret this stochastic gradient descent? Um, the way to look at the stochastic gradient descent is the following. Uh, when you have the expectation of the gradient equal to the full gradient, that means uh, uh, the average is the true gradient. Now, when you remove this expectation, which is the one that you actually use in your algorithm, it will be the true gradient plus some noise. Okay, so you can you can imagine that it will be it will be some. Originally, you want to go through that direction, but because of the stochastic gradient, because of the subset that you're choosing, you will deviate, and that would be a noise. Okay, noise in the search direction. And it has to be a zero mean noise. Why? Because the, the expectation of this guy has to be the full gradient itself. And so the mean of that, 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 that noise has to be zero. Otherwise, you will have a bias estimate. Okay. Now, the, and another interesting point about the stochastic gradient descent is that for stochastic gradient descent, the constant step size Unfortunately, do not converge. Okay, you need to make sure that the, your, your your step size is getting smaller and smaller each iteration, and there are proofs to to show that. Um, so, uh, what happens when you choose a, uh, a, a constant step size? Well, um, you can you can show the following. If theta star is a minimizer, then if you evaluate this, um, when you evaluate this uh, gradient of the uh, at x star. Then uh, you can show that it has to be zero because by by definition this is the uh, minimum point, so your first order uh, condition has to be satisfied. Uh, however, when you take the uh, the stochastic gradient descent step, okay, when you put the gradient here, when you try to evaluate, this may not be zero, okay, because of the of of of, of, of the noise, okay. Uh, on average, uh, on, on average, it, 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 it is true, okay? But in, in exact step, in each exact step, this is not true because you pick, you, you're literally picking a subset out of that. Um, okay, so, so the typical strategy in stochastic gradient descent is that you, you, you choose a step size and then the next iteration you make the step size a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. Uh, so when you have experience with deep neural network packages, you realize that there's always a learning rate. That's actually the, um, the, the step size. And they also ask you how fast you want to shrink your learning rate. That's also a parameter that you can tune. That talks about the stochastic gradient descent, the shrinking uh, speed. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there are many, many uh, uh, mysterious uh, properties about the stochastic gradient descent. And uh, one of the um, the biggest one is that uh, is the following. 
Normally, we think that the, 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 the gradient descent is the best because it's full gradient and it can, it, 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 it's, it's deterministic. But it turns out that the, uh, the, the stochastic version of the gradient descent actually is better when you handle non-convex optimizations. Uh, why, why, why this is true? Okay, so, so this is, this is a very interesting diagram. Okay, okay, of, of course I draw it by using my own imagination. So, if you have a convex problem, uh, you have gradient descent, of course when you, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you use the blue arrows, you will go to the solution. Okay, the, the red lines, you will take some time and you go to the uh, minimum point. But if you have a non-convex problem, if you start the gradient descent here, uh, you will get stuck by this local minimum. However, when you go, when you use the stochastic gradient descent, because of this randomness, okay, and because of this randomness, because of the certain step size, because of uh, different uh, landscape of the optimization, you might be able to get out of that local minimum. Okay, so that is a very interesting property of the stochastic gradient descent. So people are still actively working on the theory of stochastic gradient descent, trying to understand what's happening. Uh, here is, uh, one of the more recent uh, literature on on this topic, which says why 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 is stochastic gradient descent actually works for non-convex problems? Now the the math is a little bit uh, it's not that hard, okay, but it will it will take a few steps. So uh, what they show is that when you try to write the stochastic gradient descent, uh, you can actually show that your step size, uh, okay, so your new solution can be written as your your ideal solution, which is returned by the gradient descent, plus some noise, all right? And, and the noise, assume that you have some distribution, you can actually show that um, there is a there is a uh, expectation that you want to take at uh, this uh, iteration. Okay, so, uh, so I'm skipping some of the derivations here, and um, there are also some der equations here, which will lead to the following diagram. This is the most interesting diagram I want to show you. Okay, so imagine that you have uh, some uh, 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 non-smooth landscape here. Okay, this is your optimization problem, and because of the stochastic gradient descent, the stochastic gradient descent uh, is doing a very simple filtering for you. Now, where does this filtering come from? It comes from the expectation. When you have expectation on certain function, you are actually trying to take the integration of that function with respect to your distribution. Okay, so your function, your times your PDF, and then you take the integration, and that is equivalent to do a simple convolution. Okay, and a convolution is doing a smoothing. So this diagram says that if you have original function here, and then if you do the stochastic gradient descent, it is actually trying to smooth out the curve, okay? So the, in the, in the problem that you want to solve originally, you have a lot of bumps, but then because of the stochastic gradient descent, the, 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 the landscape that is seen by the stochastic gradient descent is a lot smoother, and therefore you will not be get stuck by these local minima, and you will, you will be able to land on to a global minima. Okay. Of course, there is a list of conditions that you want to satisfy. However, that is a overall picture of why the stochastic gradient descent uh, will work. Okay. So, um, if you're curious, uh, I can show you uh, in details offline. But uh, you can also read this uh, line of derivation. It's, it's actually not too hard. Okay. You just follow the derivation here. You, you have defined another ideal term, and then you analyze the ideal term. You can show that you need to calculate the the expectation, the expectation is just the integration that is a convolution. Okay, so that's a smoothing operation going on in the stochastic gradient descent. Okay, so this is a rocket fly through uh, the uh, the two to main topics in uh, optimization: the gradient descent and also stochastic gradient descent. I hope that after these two lectures, you have at least some idea of what they are. And then what are the tunable parameters? What are the things that you, you need to worry about? And also a picture of why they are defined in that way. Okay. Now, uh, for the rest of the course, we will not need to use any of these uh, optimization algorithms. Uh, whenever we see the problem, it will be CVX. Okay. But at least you know when you try to solve your own problem, you, you have your own uh, deep neural networks to implement, you know what you're doing now. Okay. All right. So I will see you um, next time.